Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the airport as we continue our sequence of events here with the B&H virtual production breakdown of all the different things and tools that you use in virtual production. So today we're going to concentrate on image based lighting or IBL for short. So image based lighting as its core is basically using LED lights mapped to imagery. So you said image based lighting, right? So lights mapped to images at the end of the day. So what does that mean? This wall behind me is basically an image mapped light. And the fact that we have an image on the wall that is portraying the light that is reflecting on me as I look at the wall. The ceiling above me is also a big TV of sorts that's projecting an image down on me. So the cool thing about that is that as all these lights, we have uh, Vortex 8s, Vortex 4s, those are by Cream Source. We have some Quasar double rainbows arrays on either side here. And then we have uh, our LED panels on the side and the ceiling and behind me. So those are all working together as image-based lights together mapped with imagery that we are mapping in Unreal Engine and in Assimilate's live effects software, as we'll show you on screen, that this is how you map the lights to different parts of your scene. And then as the scene changes, the lighting on me will change. Let's show you a demo of this image-based lighting I talk about. So first I'm gonna do is turn off the spotlights that are on me, because those are our accent lights that we added above the image-based lights themselves. So I have two little hot spots that we're gonna kill right now, and this is just 100% image-based lighting right now. The next step is I want you to see how the lighting changes as the weather changes. We're gonna go ahead and change from this beautiful sunny day to a nice, dark, rainy, stormy day. So as you see, we kind of adjust our Unreal scene, and as the scene itself is adjusting everything around me, so you see the reflections, in my glasses, in this water, like everything is changing with the image-based light. The only thing that isn't changing are these practical bulbs that are right here, because that is kind of setting our base mood. We use practicals like this to kind of set a nice base mood of light so that no matter how crazy the world around me changes, the talent and anybody in scene at least stays lit to a base level. The nice thing you see is from the ceiling above us and the panels around me, that the reflections on the lights above me, above them even kind of matches this nice blue dark sky that's ominously brewing behind me. All that together, really enveloping the person in the light is a really important part about making it feel like I'm an actual location. When you go to a real house, a real room, a real field, a real forest, the reality is you're surrounded by the light in that scene. So as an example, if we were in a green forest, you know, I would want green light reflecting from the trees all around me. As far as what kinds of lights could do this, there's a wide range. I mean, a lot of different brands now, from Aperture to Light Gear to you, you name it, have the ability to pixel map their lights to some sort of an image source. You know, some like the Cream Source Vortex 8s here only have eight cells across the whole light, right? We're not going pixel by pixel like a TV. We're really kind of chunking the light up into quadrants because the reality is when it's further away, you don't need that level of detail. But let's say I was going to shoot something with, re with a reflection really close to me and I really wanted to make sure the reflection in my glasses was good. That's where we would bring in some of our floater LED panels or KinoFlow has Mimics, which are very similar. Um, that are basically panels that you feed video to for image-based lighting that you could use for those extreme close-ups. Let's say you wanted, you know, a fireplace reflecting in my face, but like literally an exact replica of it reflecting off my glasses or something like that. Image-based lighting as a general sense to set the mood could be a little chunkier in its pixels, but when you kind of come in really close for a close-up and you want that reflection to be really perfect, that's where the more high quality image based lights like the Kinoflow Mimics or the Quasars that we have here on set come really in handy. As I sit here in the dark, we're gonna talk a little bit about the lighting scene here. So step one, all we have is actually the LED wall on right now and these practical lamps here. So, you know, the first step is actually to get your exposure at the f-stop you wanna be on your camera to your wall's brightness. So as you see through the frame, you know, we get a nice bottle, we get a nice 
reflection of the background. Tommy, let's go ahead and bring up and down the brightness a little bit of the wall. So as you see, I could dim the wall down. You know, that's obviously too dim. <laughs> and then we could bring it back up to about where we were, you know, and yeah, as you see, that's the effect that dimming the wall has. Now let's bring up the ceiling and side panels. That does a lot. This will show you how much of the light is coming through the image-based lights that we have here. So we could also dim the ceilings up and down as well. So let's dim the ceiling way down if we can. You know, so, okay, you see that gets lower. Maybe we want it brighter. I think I liked it, you know, better, a little brighter. So then the next step as we were building the lighting here is kind of adding a little more sparkle and light from the environment. So we're gonna bring up our, our Vortex 8s and Vortex 4 lights. And there we go. And you know, these are basically kind of giving me a wraparound of light coming all the way around me. Um, and it gives us a lot of control because we can decide, oh, we want the foreground a little brighter. We want the background a little you know, warmer. And it gives us a bunch of units. We have a total of about 10 lights around me right now that we have individual control of. And we could actually pixel map each of those to the scene. Think about it, a real space, especially as big as this airport, has light sources all over the place. There's practical lights, there's you know, built-in lights, there's LED screens, you name it. Think about Times Square at night, right? There's lights everywhere and that's what the real world is like versus like a studio where you might just have one light. And then the next step here is I felt like this looked pretty good, but I felt like I could use a little more sparkle to the light because it's a sunny day out there as you see. So we're gonna bring up these two spots that we have. Um, and you can see there, once I bring my hand in there, that it's just giving me a little kiss of light from the background, kind of one is coming from this side over there, and the other one is coming from above camera. And that's actually mostly hitting our tree in the background here to make sure that that has a little bit of green and life to it uh, when we see it. So obviously, as we mentioned earlier, LED walls could scale. This could be as simple as just one or two lights that you're controlling through image-based lighting that are lighting a subject and you're on a green screen and you really push it a lot depending on your creativity and how far you could see this coming together. But at the larger scale, when you're talking about a Mandalorian size volume, right? Think about how powerful it is to have the person surrounded by light in all directions, almost in 360 degrees and the ceiling and even sometimes from the floor. Another thing we do sometimes, just like we would do in a location, is we might think like, hey, you know, that spot right there is a little too bright. Can we flag that? You know, can we bring in a net or a scrim or something to darken that part? So in Assimilates Live Effects, you could also use light cards and you could actually bring cards and shapes into your scene to actually do the same thing and shape light in a whole new way. The control that you have using image-based lighting isn't just using exactly what's in the scene, but having you have the ability to control it and really fine tune it to get exactly what you're looking for from your light. So to recap real quick, we covered image-based lighting in all the details, right? The different types of fixtures that you could use, the ways you could use it with an LED wall or with a green screen, and how you could use it yourself at home based on how your project needs to be lit. At this point, I think you have a pretty good understanding of the power of image-based lighting and the way that it can envelop a subject or a product in an environment and the power that that brings to your productions. Thank you so much for joining us in today's episode. We're really excited for the next one where we go into post-production and a little bit about how we put all this together for your final story.